Hey friends, it's Scott from Double Needle Design, your commercial architect. Today, we're gonna to talk about metal coping caps, specifically coping caps on commercial walls where you're gonna use either a wall sweep, a model in place family, or you're gonna use a split face to show those coping caps in your drawings. So let's get started. Quite often, one of the things that really make a wall look good is metal coping caps. When we have coping caps, they kind of cap the wall off. They are required on a lot of parapet walls. And so today we're going to show you a couple different ways on how to do this. So first of all, I've got this model from a few years ago. And one thing I'm noticing is that this parapet on the top of the central core, we did a coping cap that actually utilized a non-traditional way, which is to use a uh, split face component. What a split face does is allows you to take a surface and divide the exterior or the finish on the outside um, so that you can paint two different colors. So you'll notice this wall here, uh, if I were to select this edge, this is a split face region. You can edit that boundary and you'll see that the split face has to lie on the boundary of the face that you're painting. So let me just go to the paint command. Let's pick something that has a, uh, a black color to it. Let's just see if we can search for something that has black on it. Uh, here we go, RCU paint black. And while we still have this material palette open, uh, if we close it, we'll exit the command. We're just gonna paint what looks to be not quite as black as I wanted to, but you get the idea. Anyway, when, when we do that and we hit the done key, then we look back at what we have. And sure, we've got a wall here with a, a, with a parapet cap using split face. Not the best uh, way to do it, but it is a way to do it. As you'll notice, Revit has plenty of different ways that you can achieve the same thing. So in this case, let's. the reason why I did it this way, to do a sloped coping cap with a wall sweep is difficult sometimes, especially if you're doing it continuously because you're asking it to move horizontally and vertically, which Revit has a tough time with unless you use 3D faces. Another instance of a coping cap is on the back side of this project. And you can see that here, we've got a fiber cement wall, and then we also have a coping cap here, which is actually a wall sweep. So just to show you how this was created to start, let's delete this one. And we will go to wall, and we'll hit the pull down that says wall sweep. And from that, we are gonna select the front and top corner, at least for this profile, of the wall we want to attach a coping cap to. So as I get here, you'll see that this will snap to this area and if I zoom in really close there is a small blue dashed line it's very very difficult to see but it extends along the front face here which indicates that it's going to snap this cap to this corner so I'm going to select it and then before I hit escape or right click I have the option to select other walls it doesn't say that anywhere here except down at the very bottom it'll say mouse over a wall and press the left button to add the wall sweep to that wall so let's move over to this one and we'll add one here. As we do that, it automatically miters this corner and produces a really nice uh, corner piece. And that's only if the two walls um, are uh, contiguous with each other and also only if the uh, profile that you're using has the ability to make that miter. I've had a few that won't miter automatically. After I hit the escape button, it finishes the sweep and we have ourselves a really nice parapet cap that actually has a bit of a slope to it. Now that that's finished, we have a very nice coping cap uh, where we can see this is nice and mitered on this edge. One of the things in Revit that actually has been changed in one of the latest versions is that the, the old problem you used to have while doing wall sweeps uh, with a parapet cap is that wall sweeps did not follow the graphic display options when you printed. So what that meant was this parapet cap would show up as solid black when the rest of the wall had depth cueing and lighter turned on. So let's just show you what that meant. Um, I'm in Revit 2023. So if I go to my graphic display options and I go to depth cueing and I show my depth, usually I use three and five as my nearness. That says that objects that are right up next to the cut plane for the elevation are black. Anything a few feet after that turns to gray. So I did my fade limit and I want it very light. I wanted a 10 out of 100 of lightness. So when I hit okay on that, you can see that this area got significantly lighter in Revit. And in the old versions of Revit, this parapet cap would stay black. It looks like in 2023, that's been changed. Um, as you can see now, the parapet cap is faded back as well as the rest of the wall. So it appears like that's worked better. If you're using an older version of Revit, 
be forewarned that this area might actually be solid black. But we're gonna do a parapet cap using an in model in place family. But essentially, we're gonna go component, model in place, and because it's part of the wall, we're gonna make it a, um, a wall type. That way, when you turn walls on and off, it'll turn off as well. So we're gonna make it a wall, and as you know uh, from my YouTube short, I like to put a uh, MIP in front of all my model in place families. That way you can see it in the project browser a lot easier. So we're going to call this um, North Wall Parapet. I'm going to create a sweep and I'm going to say pick path. The great thing about pick path and pick 3D edges is that it'll actually select that corner for me. So I'll select that and I will select that wall. These need to be continuous. I could have picked that little segment, but I'll just trim these together. And that defines my path for the sweep. Now I'm also gonna select or edit my profile. Now I can do one of two things. I can draw my profile, or I can select a pre-made one, which I already have in this model. So going to profile selection, I'll scroll down to metal coping cap, fiber cement here. And if you look, it's actually intelligently placed that coping cap on that sweep at the correct intersection. If we rotate around a little bit more, you can see that that red dot is the connection point where it's selecting this 3D edge and that inside corner of the parapet, and that's how it's gonna make it sweep. Now I'm all set, I can just hit my check mark and it'll actually model that parapet sweep for me. The great thing is it'll always continuously miter these corners uh, a little bit better than the wall sweep will. But the problem with this is when we go to move this wall or change the height of this wall, Notice that it does some funny things like it actually deleted that parapet cap because it couldn't make the corner around that lowered wall. And I'll just reset that, undo that, and it'll bring that back as well as the parapet cap. So three different ways you can do parapet caps. There's probably more. Let me know in the comments if you can think of a better way to do this. You can use wall sweeps. You can use model in place families, or in the worst case, you could use a split face. And that's all for this small tutorial on doing parapet caps at the top of walls. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Leave me some comments below and we'll see you on the next video.